Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back KS family. Our community's mission is to bring more kindness, integrity and skill into the crypto space. Let's run the numbers. Currently, Bitcoin is down 4.9% to 36873. Ethereum down 4.83% to 2650. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. If you're going through a life pullback at the moment, please know that our community's love and healing thoughts are with you. You're not alone. There's always hope and the sun will come out again. Rule 715. Be aware of self-sabotage. As a community, we focus on the components of real wealth and contextualize money as a medium of energy. And positive energy is used to do positive things. And money is just viewed as a form of energy. What we do with real wealth is seek to maintain a positive excellence life trend, one founded on integrity, decency, kindness, gratitude and happiness. This creates inner and outer peace and fulfillment and meaning. And there is always strength in that. Strength and boundaries, courage, honor and fearlessness. These components of real wealth give people a life that they can be happy to live. We had some comments on YouTube and I'd just like to share it. Averton said, I'm treating life like a game. Every day I can complete new tasks and gain new experience. So one day I can be a higher level in any activity I want to be. Every time you see a test on your path, ask yourself, what would the person you want to become, what would they do and do this? Be the person that you want to be. Very beautiful, Averton. Thank you so much. And MH, watching your channel has been a life upgrade. Thank you, my friend. We are told by the media that we should have lives of leisure and non-contribution, but that doesn't pave the road to success. With responsibility, life promotes you. Hard work and dedication pave the road to success in life. Rule 138, all investors become traders every time they buy or sell. A lot of people separate the investor mindset from the trader mindset, but actually they're the same thing. Investors buy and sell, traders buy and sell. Traders have to be more on the ball because investors typically have a longer time frame. But when you can combine both things together, take the best of both approaches, you become truly powerful. And in the crypto space, that's really important. We get exponential price movements on an upwards and downwards path. So we really need to be aware of what's happening inside the market every single day. Each day we talk about chaos zone analysis. There's basically two sections to this. Zones one and zones two are the certainty zones. That's where people have very, very high stress and sleepless nights. Zone three and zone four are the probability zones. Zone one and two, how to lose money. Zone three, how to make money. Zone four, how to keep money. They're all different skills and crypto technical analysts understand all of those skills because they need to. But it's much more than that. Crypto technical analysis is a skill and it's also a philosophy. And the philosophy is all about real wealth and positive contribution into the world. The highest honor in crypto technical analysis is the CTKS ambassador designation. These ambassadors have shown their dedication and commitment to crypto technical analysis in all its facets, especially the real wealth aspects of integrity, decency and kindness. They embody 
crypto technical analysis as a professional skill and also a kindness based philosophy if you go to www.cryptotechnicalanalysis.org go to the ambassador section you can see the various ambassadors here and i reorder these ambassadors every day so just reach out to an ambassador but what do ambassadors actually do apart from embodying the core values of crypto technical analysis they can provide a discount coupon that gives 80 percent off the ctks masterclass i would like to share a quote with you about how our ambassadors feel we all want to see as many people succeed as possible and create positive lives for themselves and those around them I don't think anyone can finish the masterclass and not become a beacon of light for their families and communities. Strong values and wisdom permeate every one of your lessons. We believe that the real wealth philosophy should be spread to as many people as possible. We all want to live in a better world where people don't tear one another down, but instead lift each other up. Your lessons help me put many things into perspective and change my life trend from negative to positive. We want that for as many people as possible. That is how ambassadors feel. Rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. Whenever you see a rule, this is a zone three, zone four rule. Zone three is the patience and rule zone. Having these rules will basically save your account. That doesn't mean you can't get losses. Of course you can. Nobody can promise you that you won't get a loss because losses are just part of the market. But this particular rule, rule no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity, is really important. Greg reached out in the comments section and he said something really important, and I would like that to be shared around. It really pushes the question, if no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity, then why not just buy Bitcoin? Okay, that's a really good point, Greg. What happens is Bitcoin's gravity is a directional gravity. If Bitcoin moves up, the alts will move up, but they typically move up, 99% of them on average, move up much, much more than Bitcoin. It also happens in the reverse direction. If Bitcoin moves down, the alts will typically move down more than Bitcoin. It depends on a lot of things, but that is the basic directional movement. And Wild West 07 said another really, asked another really quest, good question. If the alts always run in tandem with Bitcoin, how does that work out when the alts go parabolic during alt season? Is that considered a, an anomaly? And so many different opinions about this. I just like to clarify one thing before I introduced this particular rule. Rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. A lot of commentators were saying, wait for alt season, wait for alt season, wait for alt season. And I always said, what are they talking about? It's always alt season. The alts always typically outperform Bitcoin, either to the positive side or to the negative side. And what typically happens in alt season is we get an exponential blow off top in Bitcoin. And then a couple of weeks later, the alts, because money is transferring from Bitcoin into the alts, because there's so much speculation, they blow off. But the directional movement underneath the hood is always there. And we can even look a little bit more deeply. We can see this blue line. That's the NASDAQ 100 one major technology index in the US stock market, we can see Bitcoin has been coming down and we can see the NASDAQ has been coming down. There's a directional bias in here too, but it doesn't always align. It's not 100%, but it is something that you can use to stack your probabilities. And this is a really important thing with zone one, and two behavior as opposed to zone three and four behavior in zones one and two people want certainty they want a simple recipe as simple as possible and it's always what happens under this condition the answer is that 
you don't look for certainty. Certainty will lead to terror. That's why I put that in there. If you want certainty, you'll end up terrorizing yourself. What you want to do is stack probabilities and have a lot of rules. What we see is that we can only add probabilities together. So when we look at this market as crypto technical analysts, what we see is that external events are impinging on the crypto market. Many crypto people just say crypto, 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 and it exists beyond any market. That's not true. After 30 plus years in financial markets, all markets are interconnected. When we look at Bitcoin's gravity, we know this pattern is impacting the alts. Bitcoin is moving down, but the majority of the alts will be moving down more so. We can see Bitcoin is currently trading at 37,022. This very heavy line of resistance, 38,935, unfortunately, it wasn't broken yesterday. And that's been quite a line in the sand for the crypto market. There's a lot of sellers above this line, above 39,000, pushing the price down. They want the price to go down. And when we look at this particular level, we've got a 37,406 support level. Notice how price reached this 37,406, bounced and came down to another support line. We drew these in quite a few days ago. What we're seeing is we may get back to the 37,406 or we may lose this support and go lower. The incredibly important thing with crypto, it is so incredibly volatile. For example, you could look at something like this and say, okay, crypto is going down and down and down, and then all of a sudden it just shoots back up. That is what crypto does on a daily basis. Please be aware of that. So how do we deal with this volatility from zone three and zone four thinking? We make in advance probabilistic choices. We know what we will do if price goes down, up or sideways. We don't just have one position saying price must go up or price must go down. We have contingency plans that we will execute and follow through on our word with integrity and they will action depending on what happens inside the crypto market. In zones one and zones two, people take a lot of risk and they go for very low priced alts and cryptos, which typically are low priced for a very specific reason. When people get into zone three and zone four, they understand that they're after a percentage move. They don't need a thousand X return. They just need to apply the knowledge. In zones one and two, people only look at their beloved alts. In zones three and four, people, professionals, look across the entire market. They're completely different mindsets. The first thing we want to do is understand the trend of the market. What we see here is the VIX indicator, which is the fear gauge of the stock market. And we look to the stock market because we want to understand the directional correlation between stocks, bonds, gold, the dollar, commodities, with what is actually happening inside crypto. And this is really important to do. The reason for that is crypto is a really tiny market compared to the global stock market and the global bond market. You can see just back in the end of 2020, the global stock market was worth about 95 trillion. The bond market around the same time, 128 trillion. And if we just use crypto as 2 trillion, you can see crypto is a tiny, tiny market. It's so tiny, it's literally at the start. It's just emerging as a market. We're really, really early, but we need to keep our eye on how stocks and bonds perform. When the stock market is under pressure, bond prices come up, yields fall. When, for example, war was to break out, gold and precious metals would typically rally. We need to keep our eye on things. So what do we actually see in the market? We can see the fear gauge, the VIX, 
The VIX shot up parabolically and collapsed just as quickly. These exponential movements are very, very common for the VIX. When you have a downwards collapse like this, of course you will anticipate a bounce. It can't go to zero. And what does that mean? When you have exponentially increasing fear, you have exponentially dropping prices in the market. And when the fear drops, the price goes up. If you have a bounce in fear, people get a level of fear back inside themselves because they say, wow, price has gone up so much. I need to take some profit. Of course, you'll have these retracements. And that's all we're seeing at the moment. We can see oil continuing its upward march. Bond prices have hit a level of support and they're bouncing. Bond yields are coming down. We see gold actually hitting that level of technical support. It bounced. It's going up after a very, very significant sell off. There's a lot of news stories about Russia and Ukraine and the potential for war. If we were absolutely seeing war break out, gold would spike straight up the wall. We're not seeing that. This is a very orderly increase in gold at the moment. When we look at the DXY, the US dollar currency index, we see the DXY has just come back to a level of support here. We would expect it to bounce up. That means when we look back at Bitcoin, what we're actually seeing is nothing more than a natural price moves in waves concept. And these why, this is why these rules are so critically important. In zones one and two, rules do not exist. Masterclass students, you will receive this live chart in TM6. When we look at the relative performance of gold and silver and the inverse DXY, against Bitcoin, what we're seeing is we're getting a bit of a technical bounce in gold and silver, but this is just nothing more than a technical bounce at the moment. It's not a fear-based rally. Masterclass students, you will receive this live chart in TR23. We always have to keep updated on the latest virus numbers because that will contextualize what we're looking at. C19 cases, 384.8 million, quite a lot. We can see the number of new daily cases coming down. That's good. And if we look at yesterday's figures, we can see that around the world, we had over 3 million new cases yesterday. From an economic perspective, we need to look at C19 in terms of closures and increased stringency, such as travel bans. We can see Germany's on the top of the list, followed by Canada, Italy, India underneath, Australia, France, Vietnam. We can see a lot of these particular countries. And what is happening recently is that countries are basically running out of money to fund closures. So they're basically saying we're going to lift these stringency levels. We're going to lower them basically just like what Ireland is doing, because they just literally can't afford the economic damage. That links very logically to the transport indexes and airlines. When we see the airlines index, that's this white one, this thick white one, what we're seeing is it's forming a series of support levels through here and it's bouncing. If it actually manages to get over a level of resistance, and it's close to doing that now, it didn't manage to do it back here, but if it does it, that would signify that the airlines are reopening. And if a lot of countries have now figured out they just can't do lockdowns, they can't afford it, they, that means that we just live globally with the virus. And it will also mean that the transportation indexes will go up. There's a thing called Dow theory, which looks at the transportation indexes and say, says, if these transport indexes diverge with the indices, we're looking at a recession coming. What do we see here? The transportation indexes have wobbled around definitely, but they're not collapsing. 
This is why we actually have to look through all of this. When you read extensively through the financial papers, they'll always talk about these things. And at least you know absolutely every day what's going on. I listened to an influencer, quite an important influencer in the crypto space. And he basically said that some macroeconomic factor had risen, like bond prices were increasing. That is 100% incorrect. But if you know all of these things, you're going to know what it means as well. Masterclass students, you will get this live chart in TM3. There's a lot of talk macroeconomically about inflation. What we can see is the inflation rate, the 10 year break even inflation rate and the five year have been coming down. The 10 year more so than the five year. And we can see Bitcoin has been under a retracement for quite a long period of time, actually. Bitcoin has actually been coming down for 87 days. A lot of people in the crypto market are getting really tired. 87 days is a long period of time. It's three months. People are basically saying, oh, I give up Bitcoin. You're just going down and down and you just just collapse and ah, it's game over. And that is what retail influencers are talking about. Professional traders and smart money mindset influencers do not say that at all. We know the price is always moving in a wave. For example, back here, in April when prices started to come down. They came down for about 98 days. Ow! Many retail investors got badly burned because as price was coming down, they were panicking and they were getting very upset and rightly so because they sought certainty from an uncertain market. But being in zone three and zone four, our community knew rule four price moves in waves. This is a really, really important rule and it will save you a lot of money and make you a lot of money too. When we see downward continued pressure on price, we know as professional crypto technical analysts that a bounce is imminent and the more it comes down, the larger the bounce. And that's exactly what we saw here. Many people were literally bailing on Bitcoin right here and crypto. And that's exactly the time where it turned around. You can also see the CPI here, the consumer price index. CPI is going up and up and up. Masterclass students, you will receive this in TM4. I put this chart together because we need to understand the Chinese property market and the great wall of debt over one trillion dollars in debt for just these seven companies. Evergrande is just one of them. We've seen the Chinese property market just trying to turn around. But recently in the past couple of weeks, it's been going down as have global markets. Masterclass students, you will get a copy of my live chart in TM5. It's important to go behind the news. One thing that I've learned in my three decades plus inside financial markets, the news can be very sensationalistic. It's important to look more deeply and to look at the source. What we see here is Russia's main stock market index and some of the largest firms in the Russian stock market. What we also see here is a bit of a bounce going on. When particular countries go into war, it's typically not a very good thing for their local stock market. And we've seen the Russian market come down for quite a period of time. It's starting to turn around here. This may signify that Russia is not going to war. This is a may because it could Masterclass students, you will receive this chart in LV8. One thing, the reason that we look at charts is because the news is always fear based. For example, looking at the Wall Street Journal, one of the headlines, Russia has amassed more than 100,000 troops near the Ukrainian border. It's moving troops and surface to air missile systems into Belarus which borders Ukraine and several NATO members and has also moved several ships near Ukraine shores in the Black Sea. This is important to understand. 
what this does is it sparks NATO alliances. In fact, the US has abiding commitments under Article 5 to support and reassure the US's partners in the region. And it's referring to the NATO provisions that provides collective defense of NATO allies. So under that article, the US is deploying more than 3,000 American troops to defend European allies. As Ukraine doesn't have a NATO agreement, none of the new forces have been authorized to enter the U Ukraine and all of the deployments are expected to be temporary, which would actually justify what's happening in the Russian stock market. It really begs the question, what is NATO? NATO is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It's an intergovernmental military alliance between 27 European countries, two North American countries and one Eurasian country. NATO is really a system of collective security whereby its independent member states agree to mutual defense in response to an attack by an external party. And you can see the blue areas here are NATO members. I really love the video Johnny Harris put together, the real reason Putin is preparing for war in the Ukraine. I suggest you have a look at it. It's a very, very good video. I can summarize it really, really quickly. Basically, Vladimir Putin, Putin demanded that NATO stops expanding, that, that all the troops get out of Eastern Europe and the USA won't protect Eastern European allies. It's a joke. These are the demands that Vladimir Putin suggested. Vladimir Putin sees NATO's particular member countries as a threat to Russian power. And you can kind of understand it. Russia and China have a very specific ideological system and NATO members have a different one. And Johnny summed up really well that you, the Ukraine is very much tied to the Russian ideology from a historical perspective. And when we think that Ukraine is becoming increasingly westernized, in Vladimir Putin's eyes, 64% of constituents in the Ukraine said that they would be okay joining NATO and 58% said they would be prepared to join the EU. This is something that Vladimir Putin is really pushing back on. From a military perspective, when we look at the Ukraine, it's all pretty much flat land and Moscow, the capital of Russia, is just here. Belarus sides with Moscow. But if the Ukraine became part of NATO, you can see how just anxiety ridden Vladimir Putin would become because the Ukraine is literally on the doorstep of Moscow. He wants a buffer. The way that Johnny explains it, which is quite good in terms of just making it a really simple example. With the breakup of the USSR, Ukraine went its own way. And what basically Johnny is saying, it's like Russia is the old boyfriend of Ukraine, for example. This is the analogy he uses. Ukraine has moved on and found new relationships, and especially with, for example, NATO. And therefore, the old ex-boyfriend is coming in saying, no, 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 you can't see other people. That's not on. This is what basically Johnny uses. And it's not a bad actual parallel. I think what he's really trying to do is just to explain the dynamics of governmental policies and things moving on throughout time. But it's a, I think it's a really good illustration. At least it's something that people can attach to to better understand what might be potentially happening there. Johnny also goes through how a potential land invasion or sea invasion could occur and where it would happen and what the mechanics of that would be. It's really interesting viewing. I believe the crypto market is actually reacting to the Russian news more than anything. This is why it's really important for us to stack 
probabilities. If we just look at one piece of information, we can panic and we can go off in the wrong direction. That's why we need to stack probabilities. One thing of particular note, gold is a very geopolitically sensitive, a war sensitive commodity. And what we see was a very big collapse in the gold price that just happened here around the 25th of January, coming back to support. And this is nothing more than a technical bounce. If the gold traders were looking at the war between Russia and Ukraine as breaking out, we would expect this kind of movement up very, very strong, a breakout move. We're not seeing that at the moment. Just be aware of these things. That's yet another probability that we stack on top of the Russian market, the Russian stock market improving in value. There's another potential piece of news, which is really quite interesting. There was a lot of talk about India banning crypto. Now, what it's done is it's putting a 30% tax. Well, it's certainly proposing it and a 1% transfer tax on it as well. But it's not allowing people to deduct losses. That means if people sell at a profit and then reinvest and the market tanks, they're left holding the bag. They need to pay the tax on the profit and they cannot offset losses. There's also talk about a 1% transfer payment, which basically increases the price on any transaction and also NFTs as income and a range of other things, all whilst they in announce the digital rupee, just classic government behavior. We see this time and time and time again. But what has India actually done? It has legitimized crypto. Bringing it into the taxation system says this is a real thing. And that opens the floodgates. Will the 30% tax on profit only be maintained? Of course not. There will be a revolt by the people. The people will say this is unfair. And there's unfortunately a lot of corruption in the Indian government that needs to be stamped out. But we understand these things will be worked on slowly. What it's basically done is it's opened the doors of adoption for crypto in India. And that is a lot of people. Over time, it will become really, really important for Indian people to know how to trade. If they know how to invest, they could very likely sell at the bottom and buy at the top. Literally, holding won't save people in this particular case. And if you are in India, what I would suggest, if you make a profit on anything, take 30% of that profit and just take it out of your account, put it into a tax account, and then you can just use the rest of the money as you wish. You want to make sure that you can pay your taxes. It's an important thing to note that many jurisdictions, many countries throughout the world have completely inconsistent taxation regimes on crypto. They will be harmonized at some stage. What you see here is a basic first step on the stairway to adoption inside an entire country. It's very, very, very good news for crypto. But the important thing is if you're in India, Please make sure that if you get a profit, put 30% tax aside straight away. If you just reinvest and you end up losing it, you may have to pay tax from your own pocket. Just pay tax from the profits. In situations like this, it actually makes a knowledge of trading much, much more important than a knowledge of investing. Another thing, because Indian people cannot actually offset losses, I would very much suggest stay away from the speculative alts. Go for quality. You can even see here in this particular headline, Thailand ditches 15% crypto capital gains tax. Countries are in a state of flux. Just because something is put in front of government doesn't mean it's cemented. It's always changing. Rule 28, opportunities reset daily. This is such a beautiful thing in life as well. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. 
It doesn't matter if you didn't get what you wanted in the past, you can give it to yourself now. And that's a beautiful thing. Opportunities always reset daily in the crypto space as well. And there are always opportunities. Of course, always bear in mind rule 444. Ignore tips, advice and marketing. I don't do any of these things inside our community. There's no marketing or no tips. There is none of these things. It's really just analyzing price behavior so you can apply those concepts to your beloved alts. Looking at the top eight, we can see Bitcoin has been coming down for a very, very long period of time. We've got a bit of a pullback going on at the moment, but that's nothing more than pretty much normal price action. We've seen that we've hit a very substantial resistance level and that resistance is playing out at 38,935. Now, what happens when Bitcoin gets over that resistance level? We'll have a lot of people up here shorting the market, wanting the prices to go down. What happens when we get above these levels? The shorts will get liquidated. On Bitcoin previously, we've seen what happens when shorts get liquidated. The move up is very, very significant. That's why I always say Bitcoin is an exponential asset class. It's not linear. I know a lot of people think, what if Bitcoin improved by or added $1,000 per day for X days? Never, ever think like that. It puts you in a retail mindset. You want to get out of that mindset as quickly as possible. We can see Ethereum making its way up to a resistance line. What happens when it hits resistance? It's in all probability going to retrace. What about Binance Coin? Binance Coin was holding up really, really well. It's lost its support. It's looking for the next support layer, which is down at 332 and one of our 10510 levels as well. That's why I brought back this analysis. I think it will help. Solana is doing quite nicely. And of course, Bitcoin's gravity is impacting it as well. When we look at ADA, Cardano, it's under resistance, but consolidating currently. XRP is just following Bitcoin's fingerprint and it's under resistance. We can see DOT just going through the motions of the crypto space. It's really helpful to cover a lot of particular cryptos because when it comes to your beloved alts, you can look at them and apply this method of thinking. Luna, we can see Luna came down very, very significantly and it's dropped past quite a few 10, 5, 10 fund levels. Going down even lower is not a bad idea with your 10, 5, 10 levels if you're into Luna. Looking at the next date, we can see Doge is just consolidating at present. This is quite good because when we see Bitcoin's fingerprint, we can see Doge just consolidating through here. AVAX is showing a little bit more power, but the entire crypto space is coming down because Bitcoin is retracing. And because we've looked through global macro events, we don't see anything particularly perturbing on the horizon. Things can change around really, really rapidly globally, but we can see things are fairly under control at the moment. Matic is just consolidating. We're seeing the same kind of pattern play out. That's why I love to show you these things because it gives you such a good insight into the crypto market. Litecoin is still under resistance, but consolidating. Filecoin under resistance and we'll get a level of resistance around 3525, just for those who are interested in Filecoin. Algo, still under resistance, sold off, but it's in alignment with Bitcoin's fingerprint. And Chainlink, Chainlink has sold off significantly. We can see what's happening with Chainlink. It's disproportionately moving with Bitcoin's directional movement. This also means when Bitcoin starts to go up, we could see some very good upward moves in Chainlink, but always assume downward price momentum prices are negatively biased. 
looking at the community favorites, we can see Veracity is still under resistance, but this kind of consolidation goes really well for VRA. I wouldn't be at all surprised if it starts to break out from this resistance. And we can see Icon, it's already broken out of that initial resistance. VRA is still under initial resistance here and it started to turn around. You can always see a lot of volatility in the crypto market. Even a very, very good, well-considered sushi has very large spikes and very big drops. And we always get this in crypto. We're expecting these large drops. You can see IOTA doing exactly the same thing, up and down, up and down. Price is always moving in a wave. We'll come back to LRC. Phantom, we can see Phantom holding up quite well. That's really, really good. And Crypto.com, CRO ended up getting above that resistance line. It's now getting attacked by sellers at this resistance level of 4510. And we can also see RSR just on the way down, but consolidating like all the other cryptos. I had a few questions in the community section and the comment section on YouTube. Some people asked about whole numbers in zones one and zones two. People don't use exact precision. Exact precision is zone three and zone four. In zones one and two, people tend to cluster their buys and their sells around whole numbers. If it's something like $1.50, $1.60, $2, $1.50, $1. That is what happens with the retail mindset. The professional mindset down here keeps away from whole numbers because there's a whole lot of people hanging out there. You want to be just a little bit in front of the crowd. You want an edge. Just drilling into LRC. LRC is a really interesting project and we've seen a very large reduction in price. But that's not too special because the entire crypto space has been coming down for quite a while. What we really like to do is to back power and LRC has had a lot of power. It's just been coming down in terms of direction of Bitcoin's fingerprint and we can see it's following. When Bitcoin starts to recover, LRC has the likelihood, the probability of taking off exponentially because we know that when Bitcoin moves in a certain direction, either down or up, the alts follow. This is really good, but the percentage is always different. And that's why people love alts because they get better gearing than Bitcoin. Bitcoin can be a little bit like watching grass grow. But one of the things that we always notice when we have a very significant percentage down move, just the recovery back to that previous high is very large. This is down 83.2%. This recovery back to that particular level is plus 494.53%. That's why professionals always use the 10510 fund. They're actually backing the volatility and they buy when it goes lower. This is a perfect opportunity to lean in. From my perspective, and I don't know your needs, but from my perspective, I would actually start accumulating down here. Let's also continue our thought experiment on MANA. We saw MANA selling off and then starting to come back, starting to rally up. What did we say at this stage? Let's buy at support levels down. What actually happened? We saw price coming down, filling these particular support levels, just missing that one. We know the price is negatively biased. We're not like retail. We don't FOMO in. We do not have a fear of missing out because we know crypto is incredibly volatile. These up and down spikes can be massive percentage moves just in a couple of days. So what we're actually seeing is that we're lowering the average buy price and we're doing it in a very professional manner. This is what is taught in the masterclass, plus a lot more. Let's go and have a look at Rose as well. 
We've seen over the past week or so, rows starting to bottom out and we can see the price was actually starting to go up, but we always buy in layers down. We're wanting to catch these long tail rejections wherever we can, and we don't care about missing out. We're really cool. We basically say, yeah, well, if you hit my buy order, that's good. And if you don't hit it, hit it I don't care. In zone three and zone four, we use the 10510 volatility fund. That basically means that we actually look at crypto in a completely different way to the normal retail mindset. When things are going up, we're putting in our layer buys below. And when things come down hard in price, we get really excited and we're looking for even lower prices because we know the lower the percentage goes, for example, negative 53.18, you just have to get a retrace back to a specific level and you see really good percentage gains from 53.18% down, a retest of that previous high is 113.57% up. And of course you don't have to hang around waiting for it to get there. You could be happy with a 50% increase. There are so many ways of actually entering and exiting positions and you can go for whatever percentage just suits you and your edge. You can see how important it is for investors to understand the trading mindset and especially the professional trading mindset and to get away from any retail thinking. It's very, very destructive. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video if you think it will help others. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. And thank you also to our ambassadors for bringing more kindness, integrity, and decency into the crypto market. I thought what we could talk about today is when you see a market like this, we're seeing a lot of red across the board. What do you think is predominantly driving this? I would be really interested in discussing that please let me know in the comments section. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video, including the link to the masterclass. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.